Hey guys, hope you're having a good day. Uh, I'm going to make this video explaining something that happened yesterday. And this is a pretty common problem with residential mowers, commercial mowers. You'll go to turn the key and nothing happens. You know you have a good battery. Um, everything's good. It just cranked up fine a moment ago or you might keep turning the key and then it, it will crank up but sometimes you turn the key and nothing happens. And chances are what's going on is your starter solenoid is bad. Now, some units have a uh, starter that has the solenoid on it. That's pretty common with the commercial units and a lot of the residential units too. But in this clip that I'm gonna show you, it's actually a little residential mower. I wanna say it was a John Deere X300. So it has the starter solenoid separate. And the customer said, uh, it was having a hard time starting. The battery test good. Switch is working fine. Everything was good, and it would not fail for me throughout the you know other things I was doing to it. And then finally, it, it did fail. And once it did, I knew exactly what was going on. So I'm going to show you that clip now. And uh, one thing that I mentioned in the clip, you'll see I start. I turn the key twice. It cranks up, or it starts to crank, and then some. Then the third time, I turn the key, and nothing happens. So what I'm going to do in the video is bypass the solenoid to start up and show you guys how to do that. And I just take a screwdriver um, to, you know, uh, bypass the solenoid by touching the two posts on the uh, solenoid to go from the battery just straight to the starter. Okay, sometimes you'll turn the key and it works. and it doesn't start. So I'm holding the key. It should be sending power to the starter and you get a solenoid right there that's failing. And it might work intermediately or intermittently, I should say. So the way you can start it, you can bypass this solenoid. So you got the battery cable from the battery coming here to this terminal and then when you hit the key switch, it's sending a signal to the solenoid to now send the signal to this wire, which is connected to the starter, okay? So with the key on, take a screwdriver and make sure you're not touching the metal. Okay, so what you just saw there in that video was me just bypassing the solenoid. You know, it sh showed you a couple times where it worked and then it finally didn't. And it'll work uh, intermittently is the word. So in this next clip, I'm going to show you a more common starter where uh, the solenoid is built onto the starter. And it's just going to show you the function. And this is how I kind of bench test starters. I knew this one was going to work. It was nice and clean, a brand new starter I was about to put on. So <clears throat> uh, what I do is I, you got to ground it and it's usually ground just through the bolts uh, to the block. And then I'm sending power to that uh, little terminal on the starter solenoid. And this starter has the solenoid built onto it. And so what happens is you get, you know, a couple functions on the starter. Uh, so when it gets power, it has to shoot up that little gear up and spin it. And sometimes if you go to, uh, if your starter is going bad, sometimes it might just do a loud clunk and what's going on is that gear is going up but not spinning. And sometimes it will spin without going up to engage the flywheel. So if you hear, if you turn the key and you just hear like a loud spinning, like a zzzz, it's usually just that little gear on the starter spinning, it just hasn't gone up. Now I have gotten away in the past uh, just spraying, you know, spraying some WD-40 down in there. It's going to be okay. WD-40 won't hurt it. Um, and it might last you a little bit longer. But eventually it's just something going on where the, uh, uh, the little gear on the starter won't go up to engage the flywheel. And you'll see that in this next clip, uh, how it, you know, goes up and spins.
So I hope this video helps you guys out. Maybe you'll save some money on some expensive parts or repairs that you didn't need. Uh, first thing you always want to check is that battery and the fuse. Check that first and then check to see if you're getting power down to the starter. Uh, you can put a test light onto that wire going to the starter and then turn the key to the start position and if it's lighting up you're getting power and if it's not uh, getting power then it may not be the starter it's gonna it, it's got to have power to the starter so if, if you're not getting power then it might be a, a, a safety switch or it might be a key switch issue and speaking of key switches especially on the John Deere commercial units well a lot of these uh, like Skag and uh, Bad Boy um, other brands, um, Toro, they use a lot of the same key switches. So if, especially on the commercial units, I'll see where if they've left the unit out in the rain or, or water's gotten down in that key switch, it'll do some really weird things that you'll have to replace that key switch. I've seen them actually try to start up just randomly, no key in it. And if the uh, e-brake is up, I've walked by mowers that have been out in the rain and all of a sudden they're just sitting there wearing out the battery, wearing out, and they'll burn up the starter, dra drain the battery and burn up the starter just because water got down into those key switches. So be careful with that. Um, so anyway, I hope this video helps you guys out and I uh, hope you'll like and subscribe and stay tuned for more. Thanks.